Hey Man Adam Page versus Adam Cole Baby. The battle to end all battles. The battles of the Adams. But soon we shall embark on another fight. The battles of the cages and pages soon enough. When all the cages and all the pages gather together and battle for the ultimate title of Cage Page. Diamond Dallas Page as the unbiased referee, probably not. And only one shall reign supreme among the pages and cages. But right now we're going to do the Battle of the Atoms, and everyone wanted to do the Atom. Let's go, Atom! Let's go, Atom, Atom, baby! Let's go, Atom, Atom! Let's go, Atom, Atom! So, naturally, that's going to be a hilarity in shoe. But Hangman Adam Page and Adam Cole Baby are the closing match of AEW Revolution. The main event for the AEW World Championship. And they've built up Adam Cole since his debut as logically the next big contender against Hangman after he dethroned Kenny Omega and Brian and defeated Brian. So that was gonna be a big deal. Sorry, I'm just starting to feel the adverse effects of allergy season. So naturally, you're going to be expecting this for the next coming months. Way to go, nature. But I'm wearing my Adam Page shirt, so props on timing. But um, Adam Page and Adam Cole, baby, have been continuing off where Kenny Omega and Hangman left off because Kenny Omega got hurt. Well, been hurt. And Don Callis bragged about it and called out and called Adam Cole, Adam Cole a transitional champion. So you know Adam Cole's pissed. I don't know if they'll address it soon because Kenny is still ways away from returning, I think. So yeah. So naturally, with this match on the horizon, we needed Adam Cole and Hangman and Page to go at it. And especially when people were going in and say, He's not the same Adam Cole! He's not the WNXT version! He's not that! Because... Even though he has the same storylines going on, he's in the same faction as he was with Red Dragon, he has pretty much the same established continuity history, they just can't save the place because they will fire lit litigation up there, you know what? Because saying the name is offensive, unless you know you make references, and then that's perfectly all right. But, uh, yeah, this is the same Adam Cole, he's just with the elite and having crazier fun because he's insane. Well, he's not as insane as Kenny, Kenny could top that because he says, I have all these injuries, I want to be back by February. Because that was so seemingly the original plan for Revolution. Hangman versus Kenny Omega two, round three. Yeah, three. Round three. And this would probably have been the one where Hangman kicked out of the One Green Angel, which would have been awesome. One day. And we still gotta wait till we get to MJF's coronation, because I'm still convinced he'll be that champion by then. He'll be champion by then, uh, this year. But Adam Cole is right now the next chapter in his storyline with the Elite as dissension starts brewing between Adam Cole, the Paragon group, also known as Red Dragon, uh, and the Elite's Young Bucks, with Adam Cole holding on the floor and even this funny segment where they go their separate ways and Adam Cole's like, where did I go? So, yeah, it was... It was going to be crazy when the eventual explosion of the group happened, but we'll see when that comes down. So when Hangman made his entrance, uh, Adam Cole, well, let's first talk about Adam versus Adam. Adam comes out wearing Master Chief armor. A man of culture. A man of culture, damn it. And then Adam Hangman Page comes out 
Oh, wearing Yumbug style aesthetic clothing. So clearly a subtle hint, hint, wid, wink, wink, nudge, nudge, where things are gonna go soon. Especially when you got Jay Whitepool lurking in the shadows, waiting for the time to strike. But we can't really do anything right now on that. And we get our Lockhorn of Fights. It's an awesome match. Like, my god, it's an awesome match. And everyone's chanting, Adam, Adam, because it's, you know, joke. I'm surprised AEW, for all their attempted humor, did not go with the Adam joke. They could have easily went there and win. We could have won. We were on the verge of greatness. We were this close. But they didn't, even though that would have been funny. And we get our obligatory, we need outside finish it, outside interferences, such as the Dark Order, Dark Order, to make their appearance known because Red Dragon wants to make a mess of things, and all hell breaks loose. Surprisingly, the Young Bugs don't help out because they're still pissed off. I'll get to that video soon, and hopefully this week when AEW stuff shines down. But, I'm Cole, baby. You all, like, this is the compliment I could give AEW. When I watch, I, I know I'm talking about WWE on this, but this is from both story perspectives here, because everyone likes to say AEW's like WWE and WWE's like AEW. Here's the thing. When I watch their world champ, aka Roman, oh, I could say the WWE champion, but really it's only the Roman Reigns child when it matters is what really matters. When you have Roman Reigns defend the title against another opponent, you kind of don't feel it. As much as Roman has been as a character and his story has been awesome, there is this, this predictability you feel because Roman Reigns has been built up so unstoppable and has been protected so much over the years and it's clearly obvious that he is WWE's favorite until he wasn't. Then they then they try to act like he never existed, and I failed for three months. And now he's in this position where the only believable person you can see him beat losing to is Brock, which is a hundred different pro reasons are wrong. When it's not a full time talent, and the only reason that Brock is believable is because he's a part time talent and his past glories. So. Yeah, whereas when I watch Hangman's matches, I'm on the edge of my seat. I genuinely think, wait, could Hangman actually lose? Like, I know, I know I'm still saying that we're going to get Hangman versus MJF, but AEW has had a history of pulling swerves and even delaying moments from happening, but could they really do it? Well, I kiss match with Lance Archer. You like, you didn't think Lance Archer was going to win because how he's been booked, but then there was that sinking moment where you had this amount of pain and blood loss going on that you're thinking is this gonna go to lance by accident probably because you know someone's gonna make that reference but adam cole being the next champion would have been a shocker moment because and it would have actually kind of made sense from long-term story perspective on the uh from the whole Adam Cole and the Elite storyline they're doing, since Hangman's looking more and more like he's moving on from the Elite, though the Young Bucks are still part of his life, and he'll and they'll probably address that sooner or later. Adam Cole's story is, well, since they addressed it, Don Callis even brought up how Adam Cole will just be a transitional champ when Kenny Omega arrives to get back what's his, and my god, Omega will be glorious! Since we were, and I'm surprised it didn't reference the fact that Adam Cole and Kenny Omega never fought. I'm pretty certain, unless you count tag teams, uh, they, I don't think they've ever had a 1v1 match. And that's saying something because they, when, they when he was the leader and they were teasing his departure and disrespecting Omega, and you would think, oh, that's when they're going to do it. Nope, that never happened, so missed opportunity there for a while. But Adam Cole getting his um, BOOM finisher in, and they actually explain why it didn't work. 
Like, normally, you just get massive power from Roman Reigns, the will to not give up, and whatnot, and BS magic. Because we can't make up logical explanations. And instead, they say, oh, well, you see, because there's that extra padding he has on his leg that's not really his bone connecting to it, so therefore, Hangman survives just barely because of that extra layer that he was so rushing to try and perfect. So, props to that. And Hangman, he does does the buckshot. He he does the um. <laughs> let me let me try it. Uh, yeah, they call it the boom. Uh, and then he gets his buckshot Larry in, which was hilarious. But. Yeah, and then we got Adam Cole and um, Adam Page doing their own respective super kicks. Super kick, punish! Super kick! Super kick, punish! Super kick! Boom lay, boom lay, boom, boom lay, boom lay, boom! I'm thinking of another song now. Anyways. Diamond Eyes, uh, but yeah. Now, initially, I thought something big was gonna happen after this match when Hangman retained, when Adam defeated Adam for the AEW World Championship of the Adams, the War of the Adams. There's a joke right there to be made. Uh, I thought for sure we were gonna get like an ending shocker moment, like end the show on a shocking note, to, and to anchor everybody to the next episode because you gotta have that kind of momentum unless it's Wrestlemania they don't I am kind of mixed on this but at the same time I'm not as shocked as I would be that they didn't do a, a cliffhanger it would have been I feel like they should have had a cliffhanger ending to really shock to really anchor people in to get a guarantee but they didn't I kind of wish they did. Like, I know they probably couldn't get Cody in time because there is word going around that Cody's deal with WWE, the talk with WWE and Cody has fizzled out to uncertainties since Ring of Honor was suddenly was bought and now Cody Rhodes' talk has just completely disappeared, it seems. So you're left with questions than answers. But... I, I was honestly wishing something big would happen to end the show on instead of Hangman standing tall. Like, I get why they did it, because Revolution's kind of their mania, even though I would say All Out is. Or I could say All In is their super stardom, super stardom show. But, um, it did feel like... That, like it would like there's something missing and then people were assuming there's this full body guy in the camera outfit you thought they you thought it was a wrestler in disguise no it's probably something related to covid protection probably i don't know but we don't know we're heading into dynamite in the coming hour in the next 24 hours i don't know what's gonna happen i don't know who's hangman's next ultimate challenger and then we gotta wait till double or nothing for a real for the next big challenger to fight Hangman. And also, a funny a funny poster, huh? They they use I'm a they use Star Wars font, I believe. And yet, this is a Wild West theme. Is it Solo, a Star Wars story they're referencing? I don't know. But I was trying to think. I, I was honestly thinking Jay Whitehall was gonna show up. Like he's been showing up and it, he's been doing the whole thing, and they have been teasing something to have with Bullet Club coming into the AEW brand eventually. Since that AEW is currently in the midst of not knowing, hey, uh, how's Bullet Club going? Oh, uh, Jay Whitehall just lost his mind and now everything's in civil war again. Oh, okay. Why haven't we brought that up yet? Um, Impact's the epicenter we made it, declared it as? Oh, okay. So, yeah. But I did love this one thing, though. 
One of the themes heading into Revolution clearly was respecting the legacy of Ring of Honor. Because Ring of Honor was all around throughout the show, and I'll get to that. With the match of the night for many. But there was this awesome moment where Hangman actually shakes Adam Cole's hand as, you know, the handshake of honor. Honor! 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 And Dante Bosco's not here to shout his Zuko honorism and make honor a religion. Honor! And they did the handshake, the code of honor handshake, and I just love how we're we're at this point where we got AEW wrestlers who were had taught who had their beginning start their big break start off in Ring of Honor, then they got their second big break being part of Bullet Club and doing the New Japan stuff, then they got their third big break, Adam Cole being on the whole NXT run, and Hangman getting his big break mostly with AEW. Seeing these three go through very similar and then separate diverging paths, and it all comes back down to HONOR in Ring of Honor. Just kind of a thing it's the small things you appreciate but we'll have to see what happens with these two next Al Cole probably has his plan to destroy the elite from within until Kenny Omega gets back and then we get our trios title match probably and Adam Page I don't know what's gonna happen to him I don't even know what the big plan is for him after this and I think the biggest problem for this match was the crowd issue like they suddenly start booing Adam Page shocking uh i don't know if it was because they like adam cole more but that that's a different subject i think the other problem was and people kept saying like how the crowd's dead and everything why is the crowd dead and yet they blamed hangman instead of saying well, i'm pretty sure it was the dog collar match like that is the main reason i feel i think tony khan fires on all cylinders on a lot of things he has a couple of misses but his biggest problem in regards to the undercard is his placement of matches and i'll get to that when we talk about mjf versus cm punk's dog collar match there's a lot to say about that match but i'll see y'all next time this was Neo Reality Entertainment, the WrestleVerse. Feel free to like, comment, subscribe, check out my other content in the description below. Stay tuned for more. I'll see you all next time. Peace and take care. And let's get ready for this coming dynamite or some cowboy shits. Take care.